Put that down on your mind. Well, here we are. All right. Greetings, everybody. Larry here. And it's about that time of day for me to get on here and check what everybody has been doing. Well, a lot of stuff has been going on here. So let's get into it. Are you all ready? So grab some snacks and chill out with me. Are you with me? Cool. Well, tomorrow, Monday, July 22nd, is the Pin Club Meet Up here in Fort Worth, Texas. And we're going to have a quite a cool gathering tomorrow. So Mr. Announcer and myself have been getting ready to put all this together. And uh, it's going to be a pretty cool event. You know, we always have a great time when we meet. But we're having some uh, guests tomorrow. Troy LaPlante and uh, his family, his wife Sharon and his three boys. So that's cool. And then we're having no other than Jim Hines, uh, the pin maker guy. Cool. Uh, and his girlfriend will be joining us and... Francisco. There you go. Francisco. And that's a name that, for some reason, I call him Fernando or what else? I don't remember. So, but you know, Francisco, peace, love. It's all good, right, Francisco? Anyway, Francisco works with Jim, and they all kind of hang out at the pin uh, shows. And, of course, Jim does all the making of the pins, right? Hello and, to Troy Jenkins. Hello, Troy. What's going on? So, uh, Troy is going to be able to make it out to this meeting. And, Jim, you need to make it out to this meeting more often and don't be a stranger. Um, so, it's going to be a, a great time. We have a, uh, just a lot of things going to be happening, uh, a lot of stuff to get ready for. It's going to be fabulous. Ready. So I am excited and pumped up about it. So uh, what's been happening in my world? Been busy uh, doing the pen thing, uh, buying pens, working with pens, uh, checking out pens, checking out the history of the pens. Uh, you know, when I do a review, I, I try not to get too much in depth about the history. Uh, I like to if I can, just give some of the main topics of the history of the pen, uh, because sometimes, in my opinion, too much can be a bit boring or dragging, and people tend to uh, get just uh, burned out and just say, you know what, time to move on. So when I do a review, uh, I like to have a good time. I like to make it fun, you know, make it just pop. Uh, but I, I do enjoy doing reviews. It's a lot of work to do reviews, a lot of work, at least on our end it is. Uh, because after doing a review, then uh, Mr. Announcer has to do all the editing. But sometimes when I wake up the next morning, uh, I say, you know what, scrub it. Let's redo that video again. Why? Maybe something that I left out, maybe just wasn't what I wanted to put on. So, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, I've had a lot of emails of people that are interested and in start reviewing fountain pens and inks and all that cool stuff. I've had a lot of comments about when am I going to do more ink reviews? Well, I've tried to do a few, but I'm not going to go in depth with all this ink. Uh, there's enough people out there doing enough ink reviews, I will just kind of hit the surface of the uh, inks uh, and show how the ink looks on different papers. On And I also use the colorings. What I'm fixing to do is bring back my notebook. I think I started it last year or two years ago. And it has different types of paper. But the reason why I keep this notebook with this ink in it, so I can look back and see how 
the ink has held up for weeks, months, and years. So that's pretty interesting. At least I think so. That's what I like doing anyway. So uh, I do love doing inks. Uh, takes a lot of time, at least for me, to get everything ready. Some of the new inks that came out, the, uh, the anniversary for the pilot. I think I got one of them. I wasn't really all into the new line that they put out. I don't know why. I do like the pilot inks. They have some very nice inks. But I just bought one and I wasn't really all, you know, just jumping for joy. But it's okay. But, you know, I, I have a lot of inks, as you see back there, and I have more than that. But that's what we do, right? We, we love ink. Hello to Haru Yoshida. Haru, how are you doing, my friend? Thank you for joining us today on Larry's Fountain Pens. So, you know, inks are a major factor in our lives. If we use fountain pens, you need ink. Right. Uh, so when you guys get whatever pens you're going to use, do you like to match your inks with your pens or... It doesn't matter. You just get whatever pen you feel like using and you're going to get whatever ink you want to use at that time and ink it up. So let's just say you get a red pen and you get some green ink. It just happens. Why? Because maybe it's that certain green ink, ink, ink that certain green ink you like a lot. So you're going to put it in that. I, when I first started uh, the inks and fountain pens, it really didn't matter to me what color of ink I put in my fountain pen. If it was a blue pen, I would put black, blue, red, green, whatever. But, you know, in the last few years, I've kind of changed that around and I try to keep, you know, the color of the pen with the color of the ink. Uh, hello to Ambika. Ambika, how are you doing, my friend? Good to see you on here. And cool. She says that she's writing a letter with a green Jinhao 321. I saw it. Just man. happens to match the ink by random chance. Cool. You know, I, I, I saw that. I got it. Yeah. And I was saying that's a cool one. You know, that's that's one I haven't seen yet. And I think you said that it has a hooded nib. Okay. And is that a fine nib? So anyway, so uh, Troy likes to match up the ink to the pen and to the time of year, okay. like a fall colored pen. Hey, that's a good idea. I never thought of that one. That, that, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Would you uh, give me some of your favorite fall color inks? What else is going on here? Well, you know, uh, next week sometime, Mr. Announcer and I are going to be headed out to uh, Fountain Pen Revolution. Uh, Kevin has opened the store there in uh, Plano. So we're going to go do a video out there and, and see his shop and look at all the cool goodies he has. You know, Kevin's got all kinds of inks and paper and notebooks and pens. It, 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 it looks stunning. Uh, so I can't wait to go out there and, and visit with Kevin and get to see all the cool things that a pin shop has here in Fort Worth. They have, what was the name of that place we went to see here in Fort Worth? The, uh, Oh, uh, note, no, ink and notes. Yeah. It was called ink and notes. It was on Magnolia street. So we went out there to, uh, visit the shop to buy and to do a video if it was cool with the manager. But, we got there and it was closed down. Oh, one of the uh, uh, people in one of the stores that was next to it say that the place closed down um, a couple of weeks ago. They could have moved down the street. So we went down the street looking and looking and we couldn't find it. So I guess it just didn't work. And that's a bummer. It would have been a cool thing to have a pin shop here in Fort Worth. That's what we don't have yet. And on Magnolia Street would be the perfect place I would have thought to to put a pin place in a pin a pin nook shop you know in a boutique somewhere but it didn't fly so maybe they're going to move a location maybe something will pop up but hopefully it will. 
Hello to Linda. Hey, Linda. How's it going? Welcome, Linda. And some of Troy's fall color inks are Diamine Autumn Oak. Okay. Kaveco Brown. Okay. Noodler's Kiowa Pecan. That's a nice one. I got that one. Cool. Diamine Pumpkin. Got it. I got a couple of those. Very nice. Very nice inks. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as far as Noodler's inks, I'm a big fan. I love Noodler's inks. I, I think they, they pop. They got some great colors. Um. And uh, I really never had a problem with the Noodler's Inks at all. I enjoy them all. They're affordable, and you get your money's worth. And I, I, I think Nathan from Noodler's does really a fantastic job in what he does. I also love the pens. You, you know, I, I, I love the Ahab uh, pens for sure. Uh, great flex steel nib that Nathan has made affordable. And that's a plus. The Conrad pens, I mean, all of them. You know, some people say that some of the reasons they don't like the pens is that the smell. Well, you know, it does have a smell, but it's nothing for me overwhelming and it does pass. So uh, I love them. I use them. And uh, in fact, I just bought one a couple of weeks ago. It was a new Ahab. So, and I need to buy another new Ahab just because of the different colors that uh, Noodlers has come out with. If anybody says anything, just yell out, Mr. Announcer. Yeah, Troy says, try the Boston Safety Pen by Noodlers. I have been looking at that pen, Troy, now for a couple of years. I've heard a lot of things about it. What is your opinion about it? What is it about the Noodlers Safety Pen that makes it unique, make it different? Is it easy to use? Does it have any downs versus any of the positives. I'm just curious on that pen. Um, I I do like the Conrads a lot. Uh, so, you know, I don't have any problems with, with the pens. They're affordable. And uh, again, they have some great flex nibs. For the money, if you're on a tight budget and you want a decent flex nib, Noodlers has a nice flex nib or just a regular nib, they're really a, a worthy pen to own. They're easy to disassemble and assemble as well. So you can get a nice Ahab, you know, for what, 20, under 24 bucks. You can get a really nice looking Conrad for under 40 bucks, you know, with or without the flex nibs. I'm not sure if that's an option or not, but they I think they're pretty standard with the flex nibs. But that doesn't mean because you have a flex nib that you have to always flex when you write. Uh, you know, I don't. I, I sometimes will flex on certain words, on certain letters, uh, just because I think it's cool. Okay, Troy says on the safety pin, it has a nib creeper flex with a retractable nib. Okay. Can spill out if opened upside down. Okay. And can use any ink made in it. Okay, yeah, that's what I remember. It has a twist retractable nib. And if you turn it upside down, the ink will come out. Okay, I, I don't. Okay. Uh, at the end of the barrel, it's closed off. Right, right. But then, you know, the nib, you twist uh, you turn the knob, twist the nib, and it comes out. So are you saying that if you are holding the fountain pen, let's just say it like this. Uh, let me just grab something real quick. Uh, like this, and you uncap it, and you're going to twist it. It, it. Will the ink fall out that way to where the nib is? So That's what I'm confused at. Where, how, or where would the ink fall out from? Here you have your pen, and then you un you don't have to uncap it. You just twist it, I guess. Right, right. So you you twist it, and then write with it. Where would the ink fall out at? That's what I'm curious at. Hello to Cynthia. Hey, welcome, Cynthia. Glad you had time to join us today. So that's what I'm interested on, that safety pin. I've heard some good things about it. I've heard some negative things about it. But, you know, 
everybody different. We all have our own likes and dislikes. And uh, we, you know, I may love it, but I am curious about it. And hello, Greasy Pete. Greasy Pete, well, welcome, my friend. Welcome to the jungle. What's up? <laughs> okay, Troy says, he knows from experience, is if the nib is out, then it will not spill. Okay. Uh, you have to open it with the nib facing up. Okay. And you fill ink from the top. You fill ink from the top. You have it up. So when you fill it, you have to fill it from the top, you're saying? Is that what you're saying? I think so. Hmm. I need to go back and watch a video on that again because now I'm really interested again. Uh, I've seen a few videos, and it's been a while since I've looked at one to see how the pen actually operates. But uh, have you ever had any accidents with that pen, Troy? And with that uh, pen, Troy, is that a flex nib that comes with it? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Back to Wolf, uh, you you bought that pen, that, that Jin Hao pen on? Uh, she where? said it's discontinued, but look on eBay or Amazon. Amazon, okay. And that's what number was that pen, the 993 or what? Jin Hao 321. 321, gotcha, okay. And that's that hooded one, correct? Is that what you're saying? Uh, she didn't say hooded. Hey, so how did everybody, uh, or um, take that back, what was everybody doing, was it yesterday for the moon yes. landing? So were you uh, reliving the video days when uh, we blasted off to space and we landed on the moon? Cool. If, yep. you're, if you're old enough to remember it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I, I just barely turned 16, so oh. you, know, you know how that is, so. Okay, uh, Troy says, when the nib is retracted, you fill it with ink. And yes, he, he spilled it when he first got it. When the nib is retracted, you fill it with ink. Where would you fill it at? Where would you, okay, the nib is retracted. You put the ink. Yeah, that's going to be something. You put the ink there, and then you, hmm. okay, and now I'm curious. And Ambika asks, has anyone ever used a, a VFM by Schaefer? Uh, she bought one in 2012 and was disappointed with it. I, You know, I think I have, and I think I've done a videos on them. Uh, uh, I bet I have. You would just have to check it out on my channel. But I'm pretty sure I have. Uh, is that the one that comes, you have to use that certain cartridge for that Schaefer? Hello to Ramon. Hey, welcome, Ramon. So, but anyway, back to the moon landing. It was yesterday, you know, a big day for the U.S. in space. That was a day that to remember, if you were old enough to remember that. So, does anybody get into space? Has anybody ordered any of the pins, the Monte Grappa? Uh, moon pen or the uh, la 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 retro 51 Apollo 11 or the oh, it's the roll, the uh, oh, it's a rollerball uh, space pen by Baron Fig, I believe. Uh, Cynthia, I was about the same, yeah, I, I remember staying up for it. Uh, hello to Eric Hex. Eric Hex, how's it going? Welcome. And uh, Frank and Kara are here. Welcome, my friends, Frank and Kara, my sister, Kara. I hope you're feeling better, my dear. I really, really do. Okay. Haru asks, have you done a review on the Platinum Kanazawa Haku fountain pen? That doesn't sound familiar. No, I have not. Uh, the only ones I've done on that line is the 3776, uh, the music nib, and the regular one, and the 
of course, the preppy and the, uh, there was one more, and I forgot, but the one you mentioned, I haven't. I, I've been doing some reviews, and I have some more coming out on the Monte Graffa. Uh The Elmo, the, uh, I just did one on the Grip 2010. Then I'm doing one on the, uh, what was that other one I got? Uh, la, 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 la. Well, there's another Monte Graffa that I don't remember the name offhand, but it, it'll be coming up. I also have some Paniders coming up. Uh, I'm waiting for one coming in. It should be in next week, maybe. And that one has the Gold Lib. So I'm waiting to see how that one works. Um, I I plan on looking at some Gold Lib when I go out to the Fountain Pen Revolution store next week. When I, I'm going to go check that out. So... Uh, I've asked Janice in the pen club uh, to bring hers uh, tomorrow, Monday, so uh, I can check it out again. I've, I've used it once, but, you know, it's been a while, so I really want to check it out again to see if I'm really going to like it because Kevin told me he has the, the gold flex and just a regular standard gold nib. So I want to check both those out and see what flavor hits me if that makes any sense at all. Uh, for uh, for Kex and Ramon, there are space moon rabbits in the Super Mario Galaxy games. I have seen them there. There you go. Uh, Troy says, I have a few ballpoint Fisher space pens created for astronauts. Cool. And I would like to have the Retro 51 Apollo 11. That was cool. Uh, I'm not sure on the... Retro 51, the pins or the rollerballs. I know Jala, Janice got either, uh, I think she got a rollerball maybe, plus the fountain pen as as I did. But on the fountain pen, they're, they're only made 1,153, I think, of those. And the number, they have them numbered on the pen. I did a review the other day if you want to check that out. I think mine was 853, something like that, I think. But uh, uh, they're really awesome. They, they write extremely well. I'm really pleased with the pen. And they're using the number six Jobo nibs now. So that's a real major lift for them. Hello to Lawrence and Beth. Hey, Lawrence and Beth. Welcome, welcome, my friends. Thank you for joining today. Do you plan on doing a review on the Traveler's Small Brass Fountain Pen? The Traveler's Small Brass Fountain Pen. I am trying to think on that. Uh, sorry to say, this is the first time ever even hearing about it. The Small Brass Traveling Fountain Pen. Traveler's Fountain Pen. Uh, I have to check it out. Yeah, I just got in a traveler's notebook. Uh, you know, I've always take my traveler's notebook everywhere I go. So I need to check that out. The traveler's brass notebook. Uh, so where did you find that pen at? Have you, have you actually seen it? If so, let me know where so I can check it out. That's interesting. It's, it says they are made for uh, traveler's notebooks. Okay. That's one I missed. Shame on me. Like, I really need one, but what the heck. Uh, Cynthia loves the hat. Have you seen yesterday, the movie? Man, did we see it. It was knockout. Fantastic. <laughs> and you you get the buzzard and the bell. Yes, it was dynamite, baby. Let me tell you, it rocked. And, you know, let me just skip down to the movie real quick. And hang with me. Now, hang with me. Because, yes. I'm pumped when you mention that. It's like, you know, I'm picking out the artwork, but I'm still not putting it together. And Mr. Announcer already kind of knows what's going on, but he's not going to tell me because I'm already jumping all over the place. Uh, and, you know, at first I wasn't even going to go because I really wasn't interested. So I finally said, you know what, I'm going to go. Let's check it out. So, but anyway, oh, you know, when the yellow submarine appeared, when the 
uh, man was, uh, wasn't he holding up the yellow the woman was, yeah. yeah. And then the lady got involved and they were looking at this guy and he met with them and they were talking. And uh, long story short, he goes out to this house by the ocean. And this house has the driveway that, you know, like a horseshoe, like these big mansions would have. So he knocks on the door, knock, knock, knock. The door opens. He's talking to the dude in the doorway. And then you can see behind the guy, there's all kinds of pictures. And then my brain is processing like 5,000 megawatts per second. I'm just like freaked out. And then it's all happening like at once. Then when the guy, when they showed the guy's face, did I not yell out? You were screaming in the theater. Yes. I was screaming beyond. I was going, yeah! I was like, hump. I was pumped. I was like, and I was singing songs. I was playing drums all over the place. And I was just going nuts. And everybody just loved it. They didn't care because they were going nuts too. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Did I describe it pretty good? <laughs> okay. The Traveler's Pen you can find on the Goulet website. Okay. And hello to Augustine. Augustine, welcome. Welcome to Larry's mad world of hangout. Totally awesome world that in my brain, in my head, all you folks are hanging out and we're having the blast because we're just hanging out doing what we do, whatever that is. Right? Right. So let's do it. How's that? Bing. So I'll just put a hello there for that one right there. Yep. Thank you, Beth. Peace, love, Beth. You guys rock. Yeah. So what else has been happening? Uh, mm -mm -mm. You know, I've been thinking about the lives of Montegraffa, and uh, I really do like their pens. Really love them. Really nice. And the Faber-Castell as well. I, you know, I, I did a review already on the Faber-Castell Grip 2010. And I like it. Nice pen. But I really connected with this pen, oh, maybe a few days ago. The nib is smooth. It's wet. It's a nice, juicy writer. In fact, I have it inked up for the third time. That's it just for $19.95. You can have yourself a very nice writing experience. Check it out. I bought the pen from Ghost Spot Pens, in fact. Love the pens. Now they have the 2015. I think they have 2017 or whatever. But Faber-Castell rocks. Uh, Troy says, do you encourage or like pen pals? He's thought about sending you a letter. Uh, yes, you need to check out the Facebook page, Larry the Pen Bug Guys Pen Pals. And quite a few people on that one will be glad to write you. Yeah, go ahead and write me. In fact, send me a private message and uh, I'll give you my address. And that was who? Troy Jenkins. Troy Jenkins. Yes, yes. Welcome to the pen pal world. You know, where else, and I always say this and I'll say it again, where else is a better place to hang out with, meet people, is on the pig boat, pen pal place on Facebook. But, Here's a chance you can really use your pens, inks, and papers by writing letters to whoever you meet. You get to know people. And if you hang with them for a while and you and your pen pal really know each other, the longer you write to each other, you'll communicate more and get to know each other. You'll feel comfortable with each other. The only thing is that if you have pen pals that may not have any likes that you have, let's say, that's only one problem because I've had pen, one pen pal that he wrote to me for a while and then he quit writing. I guess I was boring because I just didn't have the same kind of interest he did. 
But, you know, just because you meet people like that doesn't mean you can't connect and be friends and be pen pals. There's always something happening about writing. You know, talk about your pens. <laughs> what else? Inks, the favorite papers, places you go. I mean, you know, you know, we did talk about places he went and foods that he liked, but uh, it didn't last long. But, you know, I do enjoy writing letters. Yeah, In fact, I got four more letters to get out. I've got one going to India tomorrow. So, yeah, I dig it. So, welcome to my world of pen pals. <laughs> yep. Hello to Michael. Hello, Michael. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, welcome, and double welcome. Yep. You know, now I got on my brain yesterday. What a movie. You know, it's... I think we're going to have to get that movie and rewatch it again. That was just sensational movie. I really did freak out. Really did. <laughs> I mean, I just lost it. It just, wow. Whew. Who brought that one up, Cynthia? Yeah. Well, thank you, Cynthia. That was a great one. Wow, you hit me right on the nerve. Boom. Okay, anybody on here have, have any Pins they do not like. I mean, just do not like. For me, I don't like a pen that does not have a clip on it. I do have a couple of pens that, okay, uh, they're decent, but they don't have any clips. So I don't use them as much. That's just my thing. My pens, I need a clip on them. That's num number one. Second thing, Knox Nips, they're, they're okay. I mean, uh, they're nothing to for me to just pop, go nuts about. They're affordable. They're decent. But they're not my favorite. Uh, Cynthia bought a zebra that never worked. A zebra fountain pen or a ballpoint? And uh, Troy asks, do you ever go to drive-in theaters? We haven't been in a while, but used to. Yes, we have been. And we've been talking about going to one lately, have we not? Yes. We just need to do it. And it's past our bedtime is the biggest problem. Yeah, you know, we're, well, you know, you know, when you're all right, I'm just, like I said, just turned 16, so. Uh, do you use your Twisby Go much? No, I don't, to be honest with you. And why don't I? N no particular reason. Forgot. Forget. But I do plan on re-inking it soon. Uh, Cynthia says, yes, it's a fountain pen that she found in a grocery store. Oh, really? Now, it, now, Cynthia, on that zebra fountain pen, is it the disposable one or is it one that you do fill with ink? Uh, Troy doesn't like fine or extra fine nibs. Okay. Now, I'm with you on that, Troy. I, I'm not into that, but some people love it. I, I do like a fine nib if it's wet and smooth. And what I found in a lot of the Chinese lower level pens that they, they write, for me, I'm saying more of a medium fine. Uh, now, I do have a friend that, uh, Carol, she loves extra fine nibs. So... There are some people out there that like that extra fine. Uh, you know, it's just like us liking medium nibs. I love a medium nib. That's my nib. I do like broad nibs, 1.0 nibs, um, the 1.5s, uh, 1.3s, uh, italic nibs, eh, take it or leave it. Let's see, uh, Troy says Visconti fine nibs aren't bad. They're good nib. They're nice and wet. Yeah. Uh, Ambika says, I didn't like the Cali Arts Ego and the Wing Songs with a sque Squeeze Fill. Okay. Was that the only thing you didn't like about the Wing Song was the Squeeze Fill on it? Is that what she's saying? Squeeze yeah. Fill? Oh, huh. interesting. Uh, I wanted to... I love Lamy pens to the max. Here's a pen that I want to show you. I did a review on it. 
It's the oversized. This is a nice, beautiful pen. Le Bon. Is that how you say it? I think it? it's Le Bon, yeah. Le Bon, yeah. Uh, it is. It's a beautiful pen. It really is. Uh, I got I won that on an auction off eBay, and I've been looking for more this size. I cannot find any more. And this is the first time I've ever used this brand, and it really has impressed me. Uh, a nice writer, a nice, decent, smooth, a wet writer. It's just a cool pen. Uh, so maybe you can see that, Nib. Get it up there for you. But uh, I know Gold Spot pens carry this, this brand. And uh, I need to get another one. Uh, to check it out, but they're like anywhere from 50, 60 bucks to 100, 200 bucks in that range. And Vika says regarding those pens that they didn't write, uh, Troy says he got a Schaefer calligraphy pen set and it's junk. Uh, he doesn't mind the speed ball though. Okay, I got you. Uh, does anybody on here use uh, any of the dip pens? I have some dip pens that I've really don't dig uh, but there's the glass dip pen that I have really is sweet it holds a lot of ink writes extremely well uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not Chinese made and uh, in the description how they made this uh, glass pen they made it where it would hold more ink than your typical glass pen. And then I've learned that when the glass nib starts getting dull or getting the point down, you can use, uh, I think I have to revisit that description, but you can use a certain sandpaper and use that on the tip to bring it back like it was. So, and I haven't used that for a while, and I need to do that when I do my ink test so I can do some writing, and, and uh, I, I always get a Q-tip and uh, do the little swish uh, on the color rings that I have. In fact, I have some right here that I don't mind sharing with you guys. If you all can see some right there, that just, I have them in a, notebook like you keep baseball cards and stuff like that so that's just and that's some pretty ink going on but I'd just show that so Troy has a J or bond that he enjoys using especially for testing inks look Cynthia yay mm -hmm. <laughs> shut up I will thank you but now uh, Troy has a J or bond that he enjoys using for Testing inks. Okay, uh, Jay Bond, the class uh, the dip pen, right? Yeah. I don't have my glass pen next to me, but would you mind getting that uh, yellow submarine for me? Cynthia, I got one, another one for you. Hey, Frank, how's it going at the household? Here we go, Cynthia. This one's for you. And she brought up yesterday. Look at, check it out. Here we go, right before your eyes. We all live in a yellow submarine. There we go. In the town where I was born lived a man who sailed the sea. And he told us of his tales. Here we go. La, 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 la. There we go. Anyway, so much for that. So, I had to share that with everybody. Why not? We're hanging out and having a good time. We're letting it all flow. Cool. So. Hmm, people probably saying this guy's a nut. No, Frank and Cynthia liked it. Cool. Frank rocks. Sing it. Frank rocks. And this is for Frank, Cynthia, and my little friend, Andrew. Yeah, where is Andrew this today? Is he gone home or is he at the house, Frank? Yay. So, anyhow, what else has been going on? You see my bird up there. He's looking down in my world. I love the world. And there's one of my coffee mugs because people have been asking. So, 
and there's one of my minions up there. I got minions everywhere. They're all everywhere. I'm a minion kind of guy. Love minions. Love, love, love minions. Uh-oh, I just got banged. No, uh, Troy says, I have an interesting question for you and Mr. Announcer. Uh-oh. If they taught cursive in school, do you think it would encourage using more fountain pens? That's a tough question. You know, I would like to say yes. Uh, I think when you're doing cursive writing, I think a fountain pen would really be enjoyable to use. And why is that? Well, with that fountain pen, it's all about the nib, right? You can have a $5,000 fountain pen, but if the nib's not any good, then for me, the pen just... Ugh. But yeah, I, I think it would really help the students in school really get into cursive writing. Uh, I know that my experience when I was being taught how to write cursive, I was able to use a fountain pen and that got my interest right there. I was already like, like a snake. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I think it just might, might work. And for the opposite viewpoint, speaking as a seventh grade teacher, I would run screaming from the classroom because they, they turn everything into a weapon. So they'd be stabbing each other with the nibs and they would take out the converters and squirt the ink on each other. <laughs> and so much for the curse of writing. Hmm. But I still think it might work because we still have some respectful, I'm saying, students. Now, Cynthia is a teacher, and she tells uh, her uh, her students they should at least know how to read cursive. There you go. Yep. And some of them like her pens. And what grade do you teach, Cynthia? Okay, Troy, have a good day. rest of the day at work. Is the only Troy Jenkins He's going? on his lunch Oh, don't go, die! All right. See you later, Troy. Don't forget to Message me later. Peace, love, and Trey is out of here. Troy is gone. Dang, dang, dang. All right. One, two, three. Another one bites the dust. Uh, another one bites the dust. Here we go. Anyway. She so. teaches uh, senior English. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, English teacher. Ah. Uh, huh. You don't want to see my... Uh, Writing, uh, where's my punctuation? <laughs> hmm. A period here, a comma here. But that's cool. Yay. So, anyhow. All right, folks. What have you done constructive today? Today, Sunday, this very day. Hmm. Uh, what have I done? Well, let's see. Went to Walmart. Get some shopping there. Getting ready for the big uh, what we're, uh, pin meet tomorrow. So we got some stuff for that. Tomorrow we got to go pick up some balloons for the pin club meeting. Going to have it all decked out tomorrow. Uh, anything else we've been doing? Uh, we've been watching the series. I don't know if you ever heard of it or not. Dark Shadows. Anybody heard of that from the 60s? Cool. Uh, and that's my one. And been working in the pin room off and on. Cynthia likes that you write every day. Uh, every day, religiously. Morning, evening, and night. Yes. I love it. Totally, totally love it. And I can get, or oh, I have done, believe it or not, the Twisby. 700 and within three days I can empty it I've written God's my witness that much with it some folks say there's no way there's too much ink in that there is a lot of ink in it but I do a lot of writing you know whatever time I get up if it's 
one, two or three o'clock, I hit the desk and I start writing. I have a notebook there. Then when I come into the pen room, I have an exercise bike. I'm working out, but I have to do some writing there. I have another notebook there. Then in the den, I'll be doing some writing there. I have my traveler's notebook with me. I'll do some writing there. And when we're out and about, I may pull out that traveler's notebook and be writing. When I'm somewhere, it depends where we're at, I can be writing in my traveler's notebook. When I did a video last week, we went to the Botanic Gardens here in Fort Worth. I took, I always take my journal with me, traveler's notebook, and a pen, actually two pens. And uh, I'll sit in the shade and I'll write and write. And I, I, I just have a great time doing it. That's my thing. You know, I, I write a lot. Uh, so I, I love using fountain pens. You know, that's, that's my heart. If, if I was able to work, uh, then I could get more pens easier than I, it takes me now. Uh, I just have to do a lot of saving or selling, which I hate to do because, you know, once I sell a pen, then later I wish I had that pen, but it's gone. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I love it. Hey, Ambika apparently went and checked. Um, she, uh, she said you haven't reviewed the VFM. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hello to Noodles. And uh, Frank's parents wouldn't let him watch Dark Shadows. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, we were a little bit young for it at the time. Yes. That's a bummer. Love Dark Shadows, and it's getting juicy. Barnabas Collins. Mm. People ask, what do I keep in this here? Well, let me show you. Nothing in that one. You know, when I used to work, believe it or not, I would take this with me. And I would keep, I don't know, cookies or sandwiches or something in there. And can you see me going to work, going to my office. I'm in the elevator going up and full of people. And I'm holding this in my hand. And people are looking at my uh, lunch kit. And they'll say, uh, that's a nice uh, lunch kit, Larry. Uh. What is it? Oh, that's a yellow submarine from the Beatles. Oh, okay, cool. Do you actually have stuff in there? I said, I have my lunch in here. And I would open and show it. They would really uh, not think that this is a, a cool lunch kit. So, and I have others, you know. So that's what I do. And yes, I was in a band. Mr. Announcer and I were in a band for many years, were we not? Yes. And uh, we ha did never have any thoughts of playing professional. We just, you know, played at the house. We had another fellow. There was three of us. And uh, one day, it just happened. I don't know how, I forgot, but we had to do a gig and we got paid for it. So once you get paid for uh, once you get paid, you consider doing professionals. So that was cool. Uh, let's see. To noodles, no, that is fountain pen, uh, fountain pen, uh, fountain pen ink on the sh uh, shelf up there. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Haru asks, "What's your favorite pilot fountain pen?" Oh wow. Okay, that's a tough one. Uh, uh, I, you know, I'm going to go right now with Vanishing Point. I love Vanishing Point. Uh, and I do have uh, got another pilot. And I forgot offhand the name of it. But uh, the, the pilot Vanishing Point is one of my favorites. Uh, and I have to get the eyeglass out to tell you because I've got a couple of these that are really sweet. Uh, the Pilot. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Well, the Custom 74. I've got two of these, yeah. One with that large nib, and uh, this is the one with the regular one. They really are sweet, but I'm going to go with the Pilot Vanishing Point this time. It's just a sweet pen. Also, if you're a Lamy lover, uh, or you're thinking about getting a Lamy pen, but not sure if you're going to like it or not, and you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can always pick up a urine. Urine. Yarin fountain pen. They're beautiful pens. They come in all kinds of colors, and they're just like the Lamy, as you can well see. And they really write really nice. Uh, come with a converter. Uh, and this one's extra fine. A lot of them are, but they don't write like extra fines at all. More of a medium, but that, a nice writer. Okay, Noodles, This uh, what this channel is about is fountain pens, uh, the kind that you fill up with ink from a bottle. Uh, and Larry does reviews of the different kind of fountain pens that are available. And to answer the question, uh, the name of the band was Retro Resurrection. Fountain pen. There are some fountain pens. Those are fountain pens, fountain pens. And there's some more Lamy's. Fountain pens. These are fountain pens, my friends. People love are just coming out and learning all kinds of fountain pens. Here's my sweet baby. And this is the, That's the Esconti Homo Sapien with the C. Shire. Yes, there it is. That is sweet with the dream touch nib that is dynamite. Dynamite. Uh, and this one is a, I'm thinking, uh, and I do have some Weaver pens, you know, the kind you went to school with back in the day, they're pretty cool. Uh, I like them, believe it or not, I do like them. It's a great pen. Uh, Haru says he's never bought a Lamy before. What kind of pens do you own now? And are you interested in Lamy pens? They have some really nice looking ones. You know, some people don't like the grip. You know, I love the grip. It just depends on the individual. Uh, Kara's favorite is Kakuno EF. What's that? Uh, I guess that's a pen. I, I'm not familiar with it. Uh, Cynthia loves Lamy Safaris, but she lost her petrol. Oh, bummer. I've got a, a couple of new Lamy's here. Uh, this is the one that was made uh, for the USA by Lamy. Remember that one? It came out. That's a cool one. Uh, and then I did get uh, one of the new ones, the pastel colors. And then, uh, which was the one that Kara got me? She got me one of the Lamy Lux. Uh, I believe it was this one. A friend of mine, Kara, she's on here. She got me this one. Really a sweet pen. Beautiful pen. I love them to death. And here's what I like to share with everybody what I did. Uh, yeah, I do love Lamy pens. I do, do, do. And what I did was on one of my Lamy All-Stars, let me find it for you. Okay, the Kakuno is a uh, pilot fountain oh, pen. Yes, the Kakuno, yeah, yeah, pilot. You're right, you're correct. I am looking forward. And uh, Noodles, you know, we have several people who actually do uh, artwork using ink. Check out the Facebook page, Larry's Fountain Pens, and you'll see some posts by a couple of guys on there that uh, do some really excellent yeah. artwork of the fountain pens. Larry's Fountain Pens. Bye, Cynthia. Have a good day. Cynthia, thank you for joining us today. But I have a gold nib on one of my Lamy All-Stars, and I'm trying to find out where did I put that, Jewel? I don't know if it's here in my drawer or I put it in my pin case. Uh, now that I need it, I can't find it. So anyway, 
I'll have to find it and show everybody again next time I come on. But anyway, hey, folks, it's almost 7 o'clock. I've got to go check my doggy, see how he's doing, get ready for his bed treats, and got to get ready for tomorrow, the pin club meet. Got to get a lot of stuff ready. Uh, got to get a lot of names, addresses out. Got to get some labels ready. So, my friends, hey, thank you. Uh, hold on. One more question. One more question. Uh, hello to Julian. Hello, Julian. Do you enjoy the Platinum 3776 as much as the Sailor? Uh, the Sailor Large, 1911 Large. I love the Platinum 3776, and I do love the Sailor. Uh, the Sailor 1911 Large, uh, or the Sailor Pro Gear. I really enjoy those pins. Which would I like better? Wow, that's a tough one. That's really a tough one. Uh, I would probably go hmm, Sailor. With the Platinum right there next to it. Platinum, though, is a knockout pin. And glad to see you, Julian. Hello, Julian. Yeah. So, anyhow, any other questions before I have to depart, my friends? I got a line on you. Okay. So, how many people rock and roll on here? Come on now. I know Frank, you do. So, Kara does. I know that for sure. Yes, Greasy Pete, if you're still on there, no, you do. Julian, maybe you do. So, I have had a blast today. I really have had a great, great time. You guys are cool. You guys are just loads of fun to hang out with. You know, had a, a good turnout, a lot of fun, a lot of people asking questions. That was really cool. We really got into it today. You guys rock. A uh, quick comment. Uh, Haru says that he collects mostly pilot fountain pens. He has the uh, custom 912 FA, the Justice 95, and the Metropolitan, and a lot of vanish Vanishing Point. Yep. I have, I have some Metropolitan, which I truly love. Love my Vanishing Points. Can't go wrong. So, my friends. That should do it. Frank, goodbye to you. See you guys tomorrow night tell Kara we're praying for her. we think about her every day and with that said it is time for us to say M-I-C K-E-Y M-O U-S E Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse see ya Goodbye, folks. Have a great day. I've had a wonderful, fabulous day. I'm gone. Later, folks.